everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now today I thought we'd do a more technical video. So what we're going to look at is three topics that are actually really closely related. So we're going to start off with a fairly quick look at saponification and what it is. I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail. And then the two topics that sort of come off of that very nicely are super fat, what all that is about. And also when we have something that's called a lye heavy soap. So why the jiggling bottles then? Well, unless you're very new to soap making, you probably already know that there are three things that you always need when you make some soap. First of those is some oil. The second is some water or a water substitute. And then thirdly, we need our lye. Now our lye is known as several things, lye, caustic soda, or sodium hydroxide is its proper chemical name and its chemical symbol is NaOH. Okay, so we've got some visual aids to help us today. I've got a little pot here of fake oil. Now when we use our lye, we dissolve it in some water or another liquid. Now I'm not going to worry about the water today. Instead, I'm going to use my highly technical lye prop for our demonstration. So for our saponification reaction, we take our oils in a liquid state and to that we add a very carefully measured amount of lye. Now obviously yours would normally be liquid as well. And then we agitate them and we mix them together, typically with a stick blender. I'm just doing it with my fingers here. And we need to get to a point where those two have combined together and they will not break apart. And this is what we call an emulsion. So once we've got this combined state, we can then swirl it, add colours and all sorts of stuff, cover it up, put it to sleep overnight and allow it to turn into some beautiful soap the next day. Saponification so doesn't happen instantly as soon as the lye and oils are combined together. It does take a period of time. So it will not be saponified when it's in that pot that you're mixing it together. Now heat does affect the rate of saponification and the hotter your soap is as you're mixing it up, the quicker it will saponify. And that's where you will see people talking about things like hot process, where at the end of the cooking phase, the soap is actually fully saponified and technically safe to use at that point. Although it wouldn't be a particularly good bar of soap. Cold process soap can take two to three days to fully saponify and get rid of all of that lye. So if you remember earlier, we said we used a very carefully measured amount of lye. Now I'm sure a lot of you will be very used to using a soap calculator, but let's just quickly run over why we need to do that. When we make soap, there are a whole host of different oils that we can use to make our soap perform in different ways. Now, each of those oils is different. And therefore, because they have a different makeup, they need a different amount of lye to saponify them. So this is where we can see, for example, in soap calc that we have our lye calculator, which is just basically a database of all the saponification values, which will work out your lye amount for you when you put your oil recipe in. Now, I think what a lot of people don't realise is that these sap values, so saponification values, are actually kind of estimates. Everyone talks about how you have to measure your lie out absolutely perfectly to the millionth of a gram and all of that sort of thing. So why have we got estimates here? Well, oils don't have a specific set SAP value. So if we have a look at this certificate of analysis that I've got for some rice bran oil, we can see that there's a range in our SAP values. 
And that's because the sap value of oils will change depending on the harvest, you know, how much rain there was, when whatever it was was grown, etc. So as you can see here, look, we've got a range of values. And what a lie calculator does is they take a safe margin to make sure that all the lie will actually be fully saponified. So even if you set your super fat to zero in your lie calculator, you can bet that you've still got some super fat there because there's an inbuilt safety margin into all of the lie calculators. Now, one more thing to bear in mind is you could do away with a lie calculator if you wanted and work everything out based on the sap values of your oils by obtaining the certificates of analysis or data sheets or whatever information that gives you those SAP values. Be careful though, quite often when you see SAP values written from a sort of chemical analysis point of view, they're based on potassium hydroxide, which you would use for liquid soap rather than sodium hydroxide. So can you see here, if you have a look at my rice bran, Look at the range that I've got here that's been given to my SAP values. And then if we go and compare that to soap calc, can you see that that SAP value in our analysis document was for the potassium hydroxide, not the sodium hydroxide? So if you are going to try and do this from scratch, make sure you know exactly what SAP value you're being given in your data sheets. So now we know all about how our lie amounts are calculated, that leads us on to our other two topics, our super fat and our lie heavy soaps. Let's do super fat first of all. So back to our little experiment. Now to create a super fat, that means we want to have some of the oils that are not saponified, so they stay being oils. So how we create a super fat is we actually reduce the amount of lye that we put into our soap batter. Okay, sometimes you'll hear it being called a lye discount. Okay, obviously completely different to a water discount. So yeah, super fat, lye discount, the same thing. So can you see here what I've done is I've reduced my lye. And again, I'm going in and I'm doing my emulsification. Obviously, you would do it with a stick blender. And when we've got less lye, it can't absorb all of the oil. So just like my little lye sponge that I've got here, it's fully saturated with as much oil as it can be. But can you see there's still some free oil floating around? And this is what is our super fat. Now, should you have a super fat? Do you want a super fat? Well, remember, we've already spoken about a little bit of safety. It's always good to have a little bit of a buffer so you don't have any raw lye sitting in your soap. The other good thing about having a super fat is it gives your soap a more conditioning, less drying feel. Remember, the idea of soap is that it cleans you and it does that by stripping away some of the oils in your skin. So if you have some free oil, as it were, in your soap, that will then help replenish those oils that have been stripped away from your skin. So as you can see here, I've just dabbed off that excess fake oil onto a bit of tissue just to show the effect that we're now adding some oil back to our skin. So super fat sounds like a brilliant idea, and it is a really good idea. Now, how much super fat should you have? Well, that really depends on your recipe. Quite often, a normal amount of super fat is somewhere around 5 or 6%. However, if you've got a very drying soap, something like a 100% coconut oil soap, you see people do a much higher super fat, sort of 25% or so in that, just to counteract the drying feel of the coconut oil. There are a couple of disadvantages to super fat though. Remember any time that you have unsaponified oil in your soap that is still just oil and therefore potentially if you have a lot of it then 
your soap could actually go rancid and you could get DOS, those dreaded orange spots. The other thing that super fat does is it does tend to reduce your lava. So the higher your super fat, the less lather and bubbles you might get with your soap. So a lot of things with soap making is a little bit of trying it and see what works for you and what you like the best. And nowadays it's very easy for us, isn't it, with things like soap calcara, where you can just go in and enter the amount of super fat that you want and the calculator will automatically reduce your lie by the correct amount. OK, so on to our last item we've got now, and this is going the other way. Now, where we saw a super fat would be a deliberate thing that you would choose to do. If you go and put in too much lye, that would typically be an accident. Maybe you forget to add one of your oils to your mix, or maybe your scales aren't working properly. But remember, you don't want to deliberately have free floating lye. It's really dangerous. So here we go again with the same little experiment. I've got my high tech block of lye and I've got my oils. And I'm just pretending that I've missed one of my oils out. So this time when I go in and I blend everything together, I use up all of those oils. But as you can see there, there's not enough oil to completely use up all the lye. So we can see with my little example that I've got here, I've still got my word lye there because it hasn't absorbed enough oil. And I've actually got some patches in my soap that are pretty well just lye. Now, if you've got that situation, that's not good. You're going to have to either rebatch your soap and add some extra oil to it if you know exactly what you've missed out or just get rid of it. Some people use it for laundry soap, that sort of thing. But lye heavy soap is dangerous. I made a lye heavy soap so you can see what it looks like. And I'm obviously I'm molding this with my gloves on because I know it's lye heavy. All I did with this is I just added a little bit more lye. I didn't go way over the top. I looked at what if I missed out one of my oils, how much extra lye would I add? So it would be sort of like a realistic example. So a lye heavy soap will typically be very crumbly or as you can see with mine, even really quite brittle. So if you've got a soap and you try and cut it and it shatters or it really crumbles, um, there is a good chance that it may be lye heavy. Certainly would be one of the things you want to check. The other time you can get soap that looks like this is, let's say, for example, you've done like a 100% coconut oil soap, like a dish cleaning soap with no super fat. And if you leave that and don't cut it soon enough, then you'll have this effect as well. But if you've done a normal soap recipe, this is my normal soap recipe with just a little bit of extra lye in it left for overnight and as you can see here it's basically shattered when I've tried to cut it. And then just to compare I've just been and grabbed a little sample soap. Um, I was just doing some testing and this was one of the sample soaps that I made for part of my testing so ignore what I've got written on it. But again this is the same soap recipe but this has got the correct amount of lye in and as you can see it's cutting like a normal bar of soap would. And then just bring in both batches of that soap back together so you can see the brittleness of the lye heavy soap. Ignore the differences in colour there. I was just doing a test with some extra virgin olive oil in my little sample soap there, whereas I used my normal lighter coloured olive oil. That wouldn't have affected the saponification values at all. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you found it useful. If you'd like me to cover any other topics, then why not leave them as a suggestion in the comments section below. If you have enjoyed this, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And why not consider subscribing to my channel? Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!